final segment of the show for today. The topic is African American History Month as well as uh, Women's History Month. And again, we're talking to uh, Dr. Gloria Pillow. Dr. Pillow joined us during the second segment. And Dr. Pillow, as we uh, started in that uh, second segment, let's sort of pick up where we left off. Uh, I think you were giving us some information relative to uh, what we might consider to be strong individual black females in yes. a real sense. And so let's talk about it from that perspective. Uh, women and specifically Dr. Haney mothers, uh, mm. and that was very deliberate. M my own mother has, um, has been such um, an inspiring, such an awe-inspiring mm. inspiring figure mm. in my own life. Uh, I remember one time Mm -hmm. uh, she and my dad were at the dinner table with us, and I, I asked her, how could you and Daddy even fall in love? Mm -hmm. you, couldn't, you couldn't do so many things. You couldn't go to a movie. You, mm -hmm. couldn't, you couldn't walk in a park. You couldn't go to the swimming pool. You could, how, how did you even manage to live a normal mm -hmm. life, have a, have a normal mm -hmm. family, inspire us the way you did? So I'd have to say that, that my mother's example helped mm -hmm. to bring me to, uh, to this study. And again, I, I began with Chapter 6, which mm -hmm. is... Um, 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 beloved by Toni Morrison, Sethi, I think arguably the most well-known mother mm -hmm. in all of uh, African-American yeah. literature, certainly. Um, the first chapter uh, is, a tr is an autobiography mm -hmm. by Harriet Jacobs, and um, the thing that she lays out for us, in fact, there's a quote I'd mm -hmm. like to read if you don't mind, mm -hmm. is that um, slavery mm -hmm. As, as bad as it is for men is actually worse for women. For women. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at, um, mm -hmm. at uh, paraphrasing, so I'm going to, I'm going to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slavery is terrible for men, but, and this is uh, emphasis, it is far more terrible for women. Mm -hmm. Superadded to the burden common to all, they have wrongs and sufferings and mortifications mm -hmm. peculiarly mm -hmm. their own. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that she used the term peculiar, mm -hmm. since slavery is widely known as the peculiar the institution. institution. Very good. Um, at at age 14, uh, she says, the, the war of my life begins. The mm. sexual assault mm -hmm. is, is what she's speaking of, and mm. this is what the female slave, above mm. all the other mm -hmm. um, um, uh, indignities, has to fear and has to suffer. Mm. This woman never wanted to be a mother. Good. She was forced into being a mother. Mm. Uh, once she had her children, she actually wished them dead mm -hmm. in a sort of foreshadowing of Toni Morrison's mm -hmm. novel where in the mother actually mm -hmm. kills them. She doesn't, of course, want her children not to live. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want them to live the way under the conditions she, yeah, of, of under slavery. The, yes. um, she undergoes um, an incredible period in her life after her grandmother abandons her upon finding out mm -hmm. about her first pregnancy, which, mm -hmm. of course, she had, had no control to over. To and her grandmother uh, had been a had been her mm -hmm. shining Egg light, mm -hmm. her her source of of nurture because her mother was dead, her father was dead, and when her grandmother turned her out for being pregnant, she was lost for a while. My students uh, would would often say. I just don't believe this story. No grown woman with mm -hmm. two children mm -hmm. would, would spend seven years in an attic living like a baby, mm -hmm. uh, unable to speak, having her grandmother nurture her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that was her condition, huh? That was her condition. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, I, I, I look towards psychoanalytic theory. Again, mm -hmm. no friend uh, mm -hmm. of, of, um, of, of, of black people in its, in, in its history. Uh, but the insights, mm -hmm. again, in, 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 in terms of the in terms of the psyche, mm -hmm. are, are are so important. Uh, what I helped explain to them was this young woman's grandmother, her maternal figure, mm -hmm. uh, could not accept the reality of her own slavery. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she told her, "This is slavery is God's will. Mm -hmm. So we simply." must live mm -hmm. under the will. Will of God. When, uh, when mm -hmm. her son mm -hmm. uh, escaped to the north, she grieved as though he had died. Mm -hmm. there, there wasn't enough, enough uh, progression mm -hmm. in her mind to be happy for him. Mm -hmm. At one point, the money that she was saving, conversely, for her children's freedom, $300, was an amount that she loaned to her mistress mm -hmm. so that the mistress could buy a pair of candelabra. Mm -hmm. The students, again, this cannot be true. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I, I, I've used this analogy before. So, uh, w w uh, we would study slave mm -hmm. narratives, and the slave was sent by the master. Mm -hmm. The slave was sent by the master to, to go across town to pick up a, a suit from the cleaners. And the, the students incredulously would ask, well, why didn't he just run away then? Mm -hmm. And I would answer them, if you can't, if you can't imagine a thing, then you can't Very do it. Good. If you mm -hmm. can't imagine freedom, mm -hmm. like the bird in the cage once the door is open, mm -hmm. like the elephant mm -hmm. whose who's, um, tether mm -hmm. is no longer there, if you cannot imagine mm -hmm. what it means to be free, then you mm -hmm. can't. You're still enslaved. You're still you're enslaved. So Psychologically, this, that's... that's uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened with this woman. When she found a way to hide herself mm -hmm. in, in the attic, mm -hmm. she did so, and then all of her faculties sort of left her. She could no longer speak. She mm -hmm. couldn't dress herself. She couldn't feed herself. Her grandmother, who had re-welcomed her mm -hmm. into her bosom, took care of her like she was a baby. Mm -hmm. And that's the point I would uh, help my students get to. She psychologically regressed to a uh, uh, almost a prenatal yeah, state, certainly pre-adolescent mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. before she was sexually mm -hmm. um, in danger mm -hmm. of abuse mm -hmm. by the slave ma master or, mm -hmm. or any, any other uh, white man in the district who might, who mm -hmm. might take a, mm -hmm. a yearning to her. Still, what I say in the chapter is she was, she was, a, she was not a mm -hmm. wonderful mother as we, as we know. She, she was a model for those women who wanted to protest the institution of slavery, I would imagine. She did one thing absolutely for her children. Mm -hmm. She didn't teach them about an awful lot. She was an absent mother. She mm -hmm. was an inconsistent nurturer. Mm -hmm. She brought freedom to her children. Mm -hmm. That is, she brought her children to, mm -hmm. to freedom. Mm -hmm. she, she found a way to get her children mm -hmm. to the North. Mm -hmm. And that I consider a great mm -hmm. gift. I, I think these are unsung mm -hmm. characters uh, in this novel and and that's for so very many reasons mm -hmm. just like so many of the of the women like Alana's uh, Fannie Lou Hamer mm -hmm. isn't that your wasn't yes, that your yeah. model mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. was not mm -hmm. necessary seen on the forefront as mm -hmm. were many men because we are a sexist society mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. we're a racist society but, but also a sexist society and and I think what she did in bringing freedom to her children was the greatest mm -hmm. gift she could have mm -hmm. given them mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to take too much time no, before and, I but and, and, and I think that there's another thing about that, that, that uh, our audience might not know about you is that uh, you knew uh, personally uh, Dr. Martin Luther King I did and I think one of the problems that one of the uh, uh, stories that we always try to elicit from individuals who visit us is uh, the assassination of Dr. King yes. because I think that I overheard you make some statements in reference to that yes. and I think we've got about two and a half minutes or three minutes before we end the show for today and let's end it not talking about a, a courageous woman but a, about a courageous man and about how he uh, Dr. King was taken give us your relationship with and with Dr. King and his assassination and the impact that it had upon you over the la next uh, two minutes. My, uh, my, my father's work that brought us from Atlanta to, um, to Nashville was with the Methodist Board of Higher Education. As such, he worked with the uh, historically black Methodist-affiliated mm -hmm. schools, including my now Clark University, but then Clark mm -hmm. College, uh, when, when I was there. And, as such, um, he um, it was able to I introduce us to uh, Dr. King and through my relationship with uh, Dr. Joseph Lowry's daughter, who was my roommate at Clark, uh, there were uh, other uh, opportunities for me to uh, even be a guest in their home. It was, it was I, I was as, as inspired as any college student upon meeting Dr. Martin Luther King. It was an incredible, experience to hear him speak whether in his kitchen at home mm -hmm. over greens and fried chicken mm -hmm. I'll never forget that mm -hmm. or or at Ebenezer Baptist Church or um, uh, later at my father's work in mm -hmm. in um, Iowa um, I was um, I was um, a, uh, a, a junior in college spending my junior year in France mm -hmm. and I was visiting my uh, roommate um, uh, who was spending her junior year in Spain, mm -hmm. and I was on a train. Uh, it was a 24-hour ride uh, to Valencia, so I didn't hear any news. I didn't hear any radio. I didn't know anything, and this was April the mm -hmm. 3rd, 1968. When I got uh, off the train, um, one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, her mm -hmm. roommate informed my, my, my roommate's Spanish roommate informed me that Dr. King 
uh, had been assassinated. Um, I can't tell you what went through my mind, only that I roamed the streets mm -hmm. of Valencia all day when I called my parents in great, mm -hmm. great, great distress. I said, I've got to come home. What am I doing here in France? I need to be on the forefront of the front lines. I need to be marching. I need to be mm -hmm. stopping this insanity. And my parents listened to it very carefully and they said, honey, you know, you knew Dr. King. Mm -hmm. What would he advise you to mm -hmm. do? Mm -hmm. That stopped me in my tracks mm -hmm. because I knew he would want me to continue my education. And especially to continue a book like you've uh, presented to us. I uh, will continue morning, to Taylor. write. And let me thank you for all of that information that you've given us thank uh, you. about uh, not only African American History Month, but about women in uh, African American history. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.